If you're like me and happily using Zigbee to MQTT together with your home bridge setup, then from time to time you need to update it to the latest software. And in this video, I'll show you on how to do it. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I've done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now I have done Zigbee to MQTT installation videos using a Synology NAS, a Raspberry Pi and even a MacBook. And thanks to this awesome software, you can get rid of those proprietary Zigbee bridges, build your own, connect with a plethora of Zigbee device types and connect it to Apple HomeKit using a HomeBridge plugin without the need of any third party cloud services. However, from time to time, you need to install it to the latest version to get the most out of it. And remember, the Zigbee to MQTT is supported by a large community, members from Home Assistant, members from HomeBridge, members from IO Broker and other open source systems. So there's always constant feedback to get most out of the software. Now, I will give you four reasons on why we should care to update it to the latest version. Number one is the features. All of that feedback that comes from the community members gets in more features to allow Zigbee to MQTT to work better. Two, improvements. For all of the features and for all of those devices that were already released or supported, get better improvements based on the feedback from the community members. Number three, fixes. At times, all of the previous supported devices do not show those values as intended by the manufacturer. So those updates are necessary to fix that to get you a better experience with those Zigbee devices. And lastly, you will always see a large list of newly supported devices by Zigbee to MQTT. That's why we should care to update it to the latest version. Now, I will show you on how to update it to the latest version. One of the drawbacks with Zigbee to MQTT, if you're using the front end with HomeBridge, you don't see a button to update the software. You've got to do it manually. However, if you're using a Docker container, then you need to install something called as Watchtower to automatically update it to the latest version. So there's basically no action from you. Now, if you're using Linux, that is using a Raspberry Pi or even a Mac, the steps are the same. So let's first go see how we can get notified on when there is an update. So let's go first and access Zigbee to MQTT webpage. Don't worry, I've left a link in the description. And what you want to do is go and click on GitHub. Now remember, if you're part of an open source community and using Zigbee to MQTT or Homebridge, it's important and vital to create a GitHub account. This will allow you to give feedback for the plugins if you have any issues or how to make it better. Or you can provide feedback on getting answers or providing answers to other community members. So this is the GitHub repository for Zigbee to MQTT. You want to click on this down arrow button on Unwatch. You want to go to custom and you just want to enable releases and click on apply. Now, once you do that, every time there is a new release, you will get an email saying that there is a new update. So this is the way on how to enable that email notification on when there's a Zigbee to MQTT release. So let's go ahead and open up Zigbee to MQTT and let's go to settings. Let's go to about and this is my current version 1.29.2. Now let's go now to Zigbee to MQTT homepage, go to installations, go to Linux and go all the way down to update Zigbee to MQTT. So this is where we're going to take all of the commands. If you're running Zigbee to MQTT off your Raspberry Pi or MacBook, this is where you're going to be copying and pasting the commands. But before we do that, let's go and SSH into the Raspberry Pi, which is going to be my case. Let's go first and stop the service. So if I go back now to Zigbee to MQTT, and refresh the page, you'll see that the service has stopped. Let's change directory where Zigbee to MQTT is installed. Let's go do a backup of the configuration. Let's go and pull the latest update, which I've already done. And let's go and do a complete clean install. 
and hit enter. So if you see this permission denied, let's go and use the same command, but starting with sudo. Now the installation has completed and you will see that all of the packages have been added and you may get a notice to update the NPM. So if you want, you can do that. That's optional. But for me, we've seen that the packages have been installed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore the configuration and start the service. I'm going to delete that configuration file. And now I'm going to start the service. Now, typically whenever I run an update, I always want to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So this way I update all of the system files. So let's go ahead and do a reboot. Now, while the system is updating, I'd like to show you two websites where you can know what are the new devices that you can add into Zigbee2MQTT. So the first one is zigbee.blackadder.com. This is the place I go to see which are the new devices supported by Zigbee2MQTT. So all of the filters are on your left-hand side. So you can select Zigbee2MQTT or you can go to the home page and select by device type. So in this case, it dimmers. Any of the devices that have Zigbee2MQTT icon, it means that it supports it. The second place is going to Zigbee2MQTT homepage. Go Going to devices and here also a huge repository to understand which devices supported by zigbee to mqtt now let's go and check if this service has been started and updated to 1.30.0 so now let's go ahead and open up zigbee to mqtt let's go to settings let's go to about and you'll see that now the version has been updated to 1.3.0.0 that's how easy it is to update to the latest version and also get all of the fixes, features, improvements, and a support to newer devices and device types. And I've also got a list of all of the Homebridge plugin with tutorials that you can use. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, happy automation, and have a fantastic day.